I'm Alan Bresnik of Live Reading. I'm here with Chris Manier of Guavis. We're at SCT Cable Tech Expo in Philadelphia. Hi, Chris. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you, Alan. Guavis has 10 years' experience dealing with big data to solve some of the problems that operators are facing. What are you doing now? How do you see big data solving some of those problems? It's evolved quite a bit. 10 years ago, big data really wasn't a term. Right. And we evolved as a company along with it. And so we went through that phase of, of really just the, how do I collect this data? I mean, that right. was one of the first things the operators and other uh, industries needed to do is just manage the data flow that was coming in. Right. But we evolved along with the industry, now sort of crossing that chasm from big data into using that data for operational intelligence and operational use cases. So I think the operators followed a similar path. They're just now getting out of the, now I've collected it, now I understand where I can get it from, right. how do I start using this in more real time for operational purposes? So the idea is to turn big data into better data. Well, it, 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 useful data, or right. yeah, yeah. So it's really, um, operators are, I would say, uh, this isn't my term, but it's, uh, they're data rich, but insights poor. So now, how do I start getting actions and answers out of that data versus just studying it, if you will? Okay. Chris, what's the difference between big data and operational intelligence? Or are they basically the same thing? And can you give me an example of what you're talking about? Sure, yeah, so big data, I think, is, is more around, again, is what, what technology do we need to, to get the data into a place where we can start to study it? Right. And operational intelligence is really making actions out of that. So a bit how we were talking about the evolution, um, I think really it's, it is an evolution of big data. So it's, it's a different space altogether, um, but it's really about, it really about action. And so if you want to sum it up, I would say uh, through a use case where you might take big data and you might do a churn study against that, mm -hmm. or you might do capital planning or capacity planning against big data. Because it's sitting there, it's in a data lake of some sort, I can do some reports against it, I can make some longer term decisions. But operational intelligence, that's having it in more real time, and that's making decisions on it as the data is coming in. Um, so I'd say a use case that we want to talk about is, um, is really automation. So either automation of, um, say, device reboots that may fix a problem, or automating the uh, correlation of alarms that are coming in to not have the manual sort of dismissal that has to happen during alarm storms, um, or even uh, automating uh, notifications out to customers when there might be a problem. So big data is getting the data there and having the ability to do some studies. Operational intelligence is using it at streaming in to take some actions. Okay. So operational intelligence is what you do with the big data after you've collected it. That's a, that's a great way to summarize it. Okay. Yeah. You can steal that if you want. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Chris, there's been so much focus lately on the customer experience. Just how important is that and how can operational intelligence make a difference in the customer experience? I, I think it's the most important change that we've seen in this industry in a while from, from terms of, of how do I make sure that I'm not losing my customers, how do I increase revenues from those customers. Right. Competition is changing, loyalty is going down, new types of competitors are uh, entering the market much more easily. And so I think the, the realization from the operators that customer experience is their number one product and is their differentiator has been a great change. And we're powering that at Guavas uh, through operational intelligence. So if you think about um, all of the various things that can happen uh, on a network, there's network flaps that happen, there's outages, problems will occur. These are very complex operations that we're doing. Right. But it's the ability to contextualize those operations, it's the ability to contextualize those those errors, those outages, with a feeling of customer impact, with a feeling of customer experience. So I can prioritize then based on the biggest impact to my customer. Um, a session, uh, VOD session failure, maybe that occurs, maybe the customer feels it, maybe resiliency covers that up. A device reboots, maybe that's a normal activity, maybe it's something the customer feels. It's determining which of those are actually impacting the customer and then driving your operations based on that prioritization which is how we can enable that change um, and truly then focus on the customer first. So a lot of the customer experience focuses on the experience that the customer has when he or she calls the call center right. or deals with the tech that comes to his or her home. Right. How important is operational intelligence in dealing with that? Well, if you think about it, this is the interface to your, to your business. This is the face that and the voice that customers are interacting with and it gives a great impression on the capabilities of the company and how much they really care about you as a customer. So I think it's extremely important. And 
what we've seen in some of our studies and when you start to look at NPS and stuff to go along with it, you can take those detractors and turn them into promoters right. if they have a good experience with your care, whether that is on the phone or whether that is um, through a home visit. Right. So operational intelligence would arm those agents with likely reasons why you might be calling, with context around how your experience has been leading up to that call. Right. So they can address you in a more personalized manner. Alan, I think you might be calling about that VOD issue. We've seen some failures. Is that, yeah, wow. How yeah. did you know? Yeah. How did you know that, that you're right? And you know what? I have a fix for you. I can push that right to your box. We can take care of that. Right. And that's going to give you that experience to say, okay, look, failures happen, problems happen. Right. But when they do, I know I can count on my operator to understand what went wrong and to fix it right the first time. We can't have repeats. So operational intelligence can lower those repeats and make a more personalized care experience. Okay. What does operational intelligence look like? Is it something you see on the screen or is it something you get in a little report? What, yeah, what's so um, it's a lot of machine to machine. I think when the, when the industry fully evolves and the automation and the orchestration pieces fully evolve, right. a lot of this is going to be API driven. It's going to be machine to machine. We're not trying to create another pane of glass that you need to look at. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is, there's great information that comes uh, through the operational intelligence data analysis piece right. that can be used for triage and such, but we really want to see a, a place where there's a lot more automation. So we're we're collecting right from these sources, we're applying the operational intelligence, you know, analytics routines to it, right. and then we're interacting with downstream systems to automate these workflows. And that's really when we get to a point of maturity, that's how we see operational intelligence. Okay. Chris, thanks for your time. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate yeah. it.